Hello, I'm Jeff Dugopolsky, but you can call me Big G. I'm an ASC certified master technician. Today I'm going to show you the proper way to bleed brakes using the Mighty Vac vacuum brake bleeder. Remember whenever servicing an automobile to always wear the proper safety equipment. In this case, I'll be wearing safety glasses and rubber gloves due to the corrosive nature of brake fluid. First thing you need to remember whenever bleeding brakes, make sure that the bleeder screws are going to come loose. Sometimes they get rusted on there, they'll break off, they may require heating, drilling, or even a whole component replacement. I've checked them all in this car, these are all good. First thing we need to do now is take the master cylinder cap off and suck all the dirty fluid out using this wand attachment that comes with the Mighty Vac brake bleeder. Once I've got all the old fluid out, we can hook up the auto refill kit. First we need to wipe the lid off, make sure it's clean so we don't get any dirt down in there. Take the lid off and this little gasket that's underneath there. And we'll just set that aside for now. I've got the air already hooked up, the wand attached. We'll just turn it on and we'll suck all the fluid out there. I like to stir it up here, get all this dirt out of there. Okay, now that we've finished sucking all the old dirty brake fluid out of the master cylinder, it's time to hook up the auto refill kit, which is going to keep our master cylinder full of new fluid while we're bleeding our brakes. The next step is very important. We need to make sure we're using the right kind of brake fluid. It usually says on the cap of your master cylinder. This cap here says use DOT3 fluid only. If you're not sure it doesn't say on the cap, check your repair manual. I've got a quart bottle of DOT3 fluid here. The auto refill kit comes with its own container if you've got bulk brake fluid. Today we're going to use the quart bottle. It comes with these cool adapters that screw right on top of the bottle. We'll screw that onto the brake fluid bottle and we'll put our valve right on top there. This clamp, universal clamp, will fit all master cylinders. And I'm going to screw this into the front here so my bottle doesn't hit the hood. There's a valve here, I got it shut off right now, and this is a height adjuster. I'm going to put this into the clamp, and I'm going to set my height, and I'm going to set it kind of high because it has to fill both reservoirs. I'm going to open my valve, and it's going to start filling my master cylinder. I'm going to make sure it fills both reservoirs, and now I'm ready to go to bleed the brakes. Okay, I've got the car raised up and I've got the wheels removed. You may not have to remove the wheels on your vehicle when you're bleeding the brakes. I just have them removed so we can see what we're doing. Just be sure that when you jack your car up that you do use a safety stamp. The bleeder screw that we're looking for is always at the top. If you're bleeding a caliper, it'll be at the top of the caliper or wheel cylinder or whatever you're bleeding. The purpose of it being at the top is to get the trapped air out of the system and the air is always rising to the top. The bleed screw is a simple tapered seat. I have one here just to show you what it looks like. Once you unscrew the bleeder off the seat, there's an air hole or a hole drilled in it that you can get the fluid to flow through and get the air out of the system. Now all we have to do is hook up our vacuum brake bleeder and put a wrench on the bleeder. We'll hook the bleed hose to the end of the bleeder and then we just crack it open about three quarters of a turn. Once we have it open, we'll turn our air on. And you can see the fluid flowing through the clear tube. You're get, you may get a lot of air bubbles like this, and that's normal. A lot of the air is coming from around the screw threads of the bleeder or even around the bleeder itself. To try to minimize the air, you can use a silicone grease seal around the threads of the bleeder and try to keep the air down to a minimum. Make sure not to use the petroleum grease because it may damage your machine or even your brake system. Okay, we're done bleeding this brake. If we were to go on and bleed any of the other brakes on this car, it'd be pretty much the same process. This one was ideal because we were able to get the wrench on the bleeder at the same time as the bleed hose. Not always the case. If you have to use a socket, go ahead and disconnect the bleed hose and then wait to see a little bit of fluid come out. Once you see the fluid come out, it's okay to go ahead and close the bleeder. Some cars have a certain order they like to bleed in. If you are bleeding multiple brakes on the same vehicle, always check your service manual to make sure you're doing it in the correct order. So 
All we got to do now is let the car down, we'll dispose of our used fluid, and we're ready to continue. Now we're done bleeding brakes, we need to dispose of our old fluid properly. So just unscrew the lid, we'll pour it into the drain. While I've got the lid off, the neat feature about this it has an actual shutoff valve. In case the fluid level gets too high in our reservoir there, this float will come up, shut the flow of brake fluid off into the machine, and we won't be spraying brake fluid all over the place. So now we just need to check on our master cylinder and we'll finish up. All right, it looks like our autofill adapter did its job. Both reservoirs of the master cylinder are full, so all we have to do is turn this valve off, remove our brake fluid, disconnect our clamp. Then we'll take our lid, make sure it's good and clean, and put it back on. If you do spill a little brake fluid in the process on any painted surfaces, it's a good idea to have some water handy. If you just pour the water over the brake fluid, it cleans it right off. So now all we have to do is pump our brake pedal up, make sure everything's good, and we're done. All right, now we're going to pump the pedal up, make sure we got a good hard pedal, make sure we don't have any leaks in the system. I'm just going to pump it a couple times, and then I'm going to hold it down. I'm going to kind of hold it there for a little bit just to make sure it doesn't drop to the floor. I've got a good solid pedal. It's also a good idea maybe to turn the key on and look for a brake light on the dash. If the brake light's out, you're in good shape. Now we'll go check for leaks and we're ready to go. Well, I'm just going to take a peek at this bleeder, make sure everything's dry. I don't see any leaks in there. We're good. I'll put the wheels back on and we're ready to go. I just completed bleeding the brakes using the Mighty Vac brake bleeder today. What used to be a two-man job for me, today I was able to do by myself. It's a great piece of equipment. Check it out. Until next time, I'm Big G.